are honestly the only required field that you need in a course screen. Uh, technically, you can build a course, and we'll talk about the types in a minute, uh, without anything else. <clears throat> uh, there are a number of validated fields. Validated fields are ones where you'll see a little drop down next to them. And basically, uh, a number of fields are like that. And again, the purpose of that is to help you get proper data entry. And again, if you are a user with a four or higher level, you'll have the option to create. You'll see a plus button there. And you'll have an option to create codes within those areas. Usually that's something that's done by your system admin or your chief uh, keeper of the flame is what we call the uh, administrator of ACEWARE student manager on your campus. Um, just a little bit of introduction, and we're going to get into details, but I want to talk about the big picture. The course is critically important because it drives so many things within your program. All of the options for a registration are tied to the class. There are some system level settings, which we'll show you, but a lot of the detail, the fees, the location, when and where, the numbers, how many there are in the class, uh, the hours you get to see, you should get. Those all are set by how you define the class. So again, um, it is a big deal, uh, and, and we'll hopefully give you a good orientation of that. I know a number of you have been uh, uh, in the system a long time. Uh, the, this is the 7.2a version. Honestly, on the course, there aren't a lot of changes, but we're going to cover it kind of from the get-go, from the beginning. So hopefully you will be at least reminded that you're doing the right thing, <clears throat> or we'll try to make sure you're not missing anything, even for you experienced folk. All right, active. This is a big deal because a lot of people tend to put more uh, emphasis on the active button than what it really is. The, the big deal about the active button on a course is that it means that this, this course is open for enrollment, that you as a staff member can then find this class when you go to add a registration on a student. And, and that's all it means. There is no magical reporting or no magical hiding or closing or hidden kind of behavior through the use of the active button. Um, and I'm not sure what the warning message was, Lori. Was there, I'm trying to recall on that. I meant to ask you that earlier. Oh, not active because something says that yeah. it's not active, a right? Message, yeah. Now, the other thing is this allows you to hide a class that have already started, or if you're building classes like now for the spring term, but you don't want people enrolling in it, you don't want staff. And now again, we need to clarify: the active button only addresses issues related to student manager staff registration. Does not affect Ace Web. ACEWEB has its own rules, so it's just for active registration. Here's the big deal, and I'm going to roll over to the demo. If I'm in a name record, and I go to add, a, I'm a registrar, and I go to add a registration, the goal, and this is important, when you are a registrar, or if you're the person who is doing course setup, when your registrars go to a student and hit add registration, the only classes they should see in this list are classes that are upcoming classes that are contemporary, current, that are available for registration. So if you click on add registration on your database, your student manager, and you're seeing classes from 2011, so here are two that are bad in that they are not active, these are not at current courses, they should not be active, and they shouldn't be showing up on the list. The only classes that should be showing up are classes that are upcoming, open for enrollment. Now, it will show it will show a class that's full. <clears throat> so if you have a class maximum, uh, it'll still show up. It will warn you that the class is full, and you can wait list people. But basically, a closed class, a class that's done, class that you cancel, I'd recommend you always deactivate it. And again, that somehow seems to get uh, confusing for people, but that's that's the deal about the active button. Um, 
there is a uh, that that button is 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 a manual button. There is nothing automatic about changing that. So either you go in course by course, or there is a mass change option for activating and deactivating courses. And we'll show you briefly where that is at the end of the session. Typically, that is the job for your student manager, manager, your keeper of the flame on your campus. If that's you and you don't know how to do that, uh, we'll try to give you the go to help or go to your tech to make sure you've got the detail on that. All right. Uh, now, the next one, though, locked. A locked class does make uh, some big differences. You typically will lock a class when the class is completed done, all the registrations are in, all the refunds are done, all transfers and edits are handled. And so again, locking a class prohibits anyone from changing any of the registration or payment data for that class. So again, not everybody uses LaLocked, but if you want to if you want to basically hold a class static so that nobody changes it, that's what the lock does. <clears throat> Um, hours and CEUs and credits. Again, um, you can turn these on and off. We'll talk about preferences in a minute. But again, uh, you would create in there uh, the, the, the maximum permissible or the, the maximum that you're going to grant for that class. And the, the default behavior is that whenever someone registers, they earn those credits by default. It's kind of salvation by grace, if you would. And your role as a registrar is if a student strays, cancels, drops out, you would then deduct those hours or wipe those hours out <clears throat> when they cancel or you, you do your final removal of the class. 